So virtual care. And then how long did you actually like spend in the sports medicine side of things? Oh man, I want to say about kind of 2019, late 2019 sounds about right. So kind of going there. And then I think I gave up sports medicine towards the end of 2022. So you got um, a couple years out of that one. What was unsustainable about that? What was the the issue there? Yeah, you know, I, I think sports medicine really kind of was was awesome. And, you know, it, it, and let me tell you kind of how I got to that point as well, too. You know, going through my training with family medicine, I mean, while there were certain factors that were that were really wonderful, I mean, there was definitely a lot of workload. Rural family medicine in, in particular was quite demanding. Um but, you know, there was so many things that I, I, I told myself that, like, you know, I, I just can't sacrifice this stuff. Like, I need to have a life as well, too. And when you're when you're a young, uh, a young physician, single, you know, in your mind, you say, like, well, I don't have anything better going on. I got to work. I got to do this stuff here. And yeah. so when I made the decision to leave rural, you know, I said, oh, better do family medicine. And, you know, you kept I kind of kept having that in the back of my mind saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, you like this. This is fun. Keep going. This is great. Just keep working. And there's this little kind of subconscious voice being like, oh, okay, you got to keep doing more here. You can't just uh, not understanding that, you know, maybe this career wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do or I was struggling with the idea of being like, you know, this is going to be my one clinic. I'm going to settle down forever and I'm going to be the community family doctor. I started kind of veering into a little bit of saying like, I need something else to kind of clear my mind And, and sports medicine, just kind of the story of my career, had a friend that popped by and said, hey, like, have you ever thought about doing this? This might be something yeah. you're interested in. And it really did blend my my passion for just physical activity, sports outside of outside of uh, my career. And, uh, you know, it was always something I, I did pretty well in in my rotations, ortho. I did many sports medicine electives. So it, it seemed like the logical switch. Um, but unfortunately, you know, it was great pre-COVID. And once we got into COVID, things really changed up quite a bit, uh, in particular with a lot of the teams that we were following, you know, high school teams, high school sports, uh, junior athletes, uh, those all but came to an end. So, you know, that motivation I had initially when we were doing it, you know, I felt like I was a, a resident again, you know, I'd come home after work, I would be reading up on my cases, we'd be doing rounds with our team. And it was really, really fun. And it kind of got to the point coming closer to 2022. You know, uh, when things weren't really changing and I was feeling a little bit of that burnout, you know, constantly working that uh, my 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 uh, coworkers, they kind of noticed that something had kind of changed. I, I wasn't really myself again and I was wasn't quite putting the effort or, or focus that I previously had. And they actually took me aside and said, hey, man, like, what's going on? Really? Are you OK? Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, how it is kind of. Being a, being a male, being in medicine, you know, you just got to be like, oh, no, no, I'm fine, man. It's just totally what it is. And yeah, they had a real honest talk with me too, being like, hey, like, you know, I want to bring up some of the cases, some of the patients that you saw and like some of their feedbacks and their therapist feedback on you. And, you know, things in my mind, I was just like, oh, that was okay. You know, it was good. Like, it was fine. It, I, they're kind of reading back to me some of this stuff. And I was just like, what? Like, I did that? Like, that's not right. Like, I, I didn't do that. Did I do that? And yeah, like I had a lot of friends at that clinic and they're still good friends of mine until today. We still chat, but they're like, yeah, man, like something's not quite right with you there. So I got to the point there where I really had to have a good think about like my career. And, and, you know, we, we did like a little, they're like, Hey man, like, so why don't we give it a good go for like a month? Why don't you come back, work at the original clinic uh, up here and see how things are. And let's reevaluate what your thoughts are. If you want to continue with this. And honestly, after a week and just really kind of self-evaluating, it kind of had that realization again that I was just like, you're just doing this because, you know, you have to be a doctor and you have to, in your own mind, have to be something above and beyond uh, just a general practitioner, as terrible as that sounds. And, you know, it, it was a really kind of earth shattering moment for me. And I, I went through it for about a week and I went to them and I said, hey, guys, I really appreciate the opportunity, but I don't know if I can do this, let alone even continue in medicine. Honestly, I was really kind of at a low of a low. And, and you know, they, they, they helped me kind of get help and, you know, working with psychologists, kind of reevaluating and, and just kind of taking better care of my mental and my physical health during those times. And coincidentally, through that job, you know, I was introduced to obesity medicine as something just to do on the side as well. 
And initially I thought like, okay, this will kind of pique my interest, keep me afloat here. It sounds pretty cool. And honestly, that was one of the best decisions I ever made because, you know, that was kind of that window in medicine. That was everything that I thought family medicine was going to be, you know, fo really focusing on prevention, really having that multidisciplinary team uh, kind of working with, uh, with patients and just being able to, to kind of figuratively put out some of those little bushfires, you know, the things that can cause like metabolic syndrome, they're slowly creeping up lipids, their blood sugars, just kind of being a little dysregulated. I kind of found that in obesity medicine and, and that really preventative aspect. So through something I, I would have considered a failure, um, you know, I, I know I could have just done exactly what I did with sports medicine and really just like put on a strong face and just really buck down like you do on all those really tough rotations or or things you just don't like doing in your training. And uh, but I was fortunate just to say like, hey, like, you know, I don't think this is for me. And then just kind of went with the wind and it actually happened to work out pretty well. So you started out with core bread and butter family medicine burnout was setting in early switched over to the sports med side of things same feeling to the point that you got called out by a colleague of like man we're worried about Absolutely. how are you feeling and then so you're like okay realization number two i'm still burnt out i gotta switch and then now you've done your a bomb your american board of obesity medicine and so now you're on your like third second subspecialty i guess out of three we haven't discussed the other one yet is, is i mean now that you're doing the obesity medicine why aren't you burnt out here is there something inherently different about this subspecialty why why is that any different from that perspective you know i i think the thing with obesity medicine uh that just is a little bit different is you know it's such a new and kind of burgeoning field right and as we know, like obesity is, is a very complex issue. And it's one of those areas, my area in particular, kind of medical nutrition therapy. There's millions of studies that are just all around there. And, you know, you have to kind of interpret the data and apply that data to people. And there's not really that typical, like, like guideline. You know, if you refer to the, the Canadian guidelines on obesity management, they're just like, Obesity is a complex multifactorial disease, and it's very complicated. Here are some things to address, and it's like a million different things on there, right? So uh, I feel this is a field that in 10, 15, 20 years, you know, this is going to be kind of the next up and coming, coming field, because I don't think there's, there's an area in medicine that can really touch in so many different domains in patients' health and well-being, so. I think just getting in on that early and just kind of constantly being introduced to other people throughout the country uh, that are really, really interested and, um, and uh, knowledgeable about the field of obesity uh, is, is really cool to just be a part of. And it's, it's something that's always fresh and, and interesting for sure. And so the passion for it shines through is that like the one missing piece that was making you feel burnt out before is that love of the game and now that that's been changed that makes all the difference or is there like a work-life balance component to it or that sense of duty of just needing to take more and more and more patients or how do you find that you're balancing that now in the obesity space yeah that's a that's a pretty good question and and you know in my mind i i think I, I can't speak for other people, but I know for myself that, you know, to, to be practicing medicine is obviously a, a great privilege. And, you know, sometimes we, we tell ourselves that, you know, like we have to put ourselves through a lot of this stuff and we might be doing things just kind of on that unconscious level that, you know, like we just got to do this. We got to put our head down, get through it. And you don't necessarily love what you're doing. You might like it. You might say, it's okay. I can manage this. And we might justify it by saying like, oh, at least the money's good. Um, but I realized pretty quickly, and, and especially with my switching my job up kind of on multiple occasions being like, it, it quickly switched from like, oh, I failed at that job. Oh, I, did, I wasn't good enough to do that job. Oh, I'm, not, I'm never going to be able to do that. To quickly learning being like, hey, like you're listening to your feelings. You're listening to your insight. Like the spark's not really there. Like you don't have to settle for doing something that you you don't love or you don't find you're not passionate about it's something there's something out there 
And I think that was definitely one component being like, you know, re reframing those kind of job, those career changes into kind of more as the next logical progression, defining your true passion. And yeah. again, in a field like medicine, everybody can find a passion there. They just might not necessarily be there right now. And yeah, I think kind of taking it to the next step too, what really kind of reframed that is, I think obesity medicine is, is an amazing topic, but, you know, working at a clinic that's really innovative and not really like any other clinic that's out there, like my current clinic, um, has really kind of changed things up as well too. So that was definitely a, a big selling point, kind of giving me that symbol that, you know, you're in the right path and it's a joy to go to work every day. I'm Dr. Jordan Valrath and you've been watching Cherry Live brought to you by Cherry Health. Please like and subscribe to see more clips like this or check us out at www.cherry.health, Canada's medical network.